I'm trying to get everything situated. See. I think it was situated and then it wasn't. That's fine. So, have you guys had an amazing today? I hope so. It is apparently Tuesday. What's up, Clara? I have puppies running around. They're being crazy people. I don't know what she did. So it is a gloomy, sad day here in Dallas. It's just rainy. So we're gonna do not resin to, or kind of resin. I'm gonna use UV resin maybe. So Tudor brought this over last night. It is an Easter egg or a holiday light shaped this. Um, it is, he bought it either at Ikea, no, not Ikea. I want to say the dollar, one of the dollar stores. And it wasn't that much. I'm not exactly sure what it's for unless it also comes with some kind of stand to hold it up. Because that would make this make sense. Or if you mount a foul, flower, a fowler, hmm. a flower or a put a light on this. I guess those are the only two things I can think of why this was initially invented. I wish there was something on the lid that made it like a stand so you could do this, but that will break it. It is glass. So I'm going to take my rings off so I don't break it into 100,000 million pieces. So what is this stand? I know, but it's not really a functional vase if it's like this. I mean, obviously not sideways, but you know what I mean? Uh, also, special happy birthday to Vamp. She turned 24. 24. Beautiful day for being 24. Now, I am going to do the deal on this that I do with all glass things with um, a pouring medium. I'm using Vallejo for this, but you can use... Um, Mod Podge, just don't thin it out too much because it will pull off of your glass or plastic. And you can also use uh, polycrylic. Just make sure it's clear gloss. Maybe she did turn 25. I don't know. What's up, everybody? Uh, if you're new here, hi, welcome. What's up? Please subscribe. We are Artists Till Death. We go live every day during the week at 6 p.m. Central, except for on Tuesdays. It's at 2 p.m. Central, and it is 2 p.m. Central where I'm sitting right now. So, um, I'm going to do something a little bit. I'm going to use the UV resin to do some stuff to it. If you caught yesterday's video, you saw the these that we did. Tudor did the butterfly. Ugh! I thought I broke everything, but I didn't. It's fine. Slipped. So yeah, so I'm going to use a little bit of that technique on these. Usually I do uh, let the box pick the color, but we're just going to move that to Miana. So the other day I was watching something. I think it was Snapchat. And they were doing chocolate things. And I saw them use a this which is some people use it as a resin mixer. Some people use it as a foam frother for home coffees. Jeff uses it to mix his airbrush paint. I'm going to use it to hopefully splatter UV resin in my this. So. First thing I'm going to do is take my UV resin. Any brand will do. I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to find out together. 
I'm gonna squeeze it into the bottom of my this. Also, it's worth noting that you should wear a respirator or have a really nice way to keep the fumes out of your face. UV resin always gives me a headache. So I have a that. Also, 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 maybe I can use, nope, I got an idea. So, I'm a genius, okay. So, what I'm gonna do is load up my little thing thing. And if you can notice on the side of the cup, I can kind of splatter it, but I'm hoping that it doesn't splatter too heavy because I want it to just be a line. People were using it to like do chocolate martini art in your martini glass with chocolate, obviously. Um, I do have this already listed in our Amazon shop linked down below if you're interested in getting one of these thing things. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Okay, I'm scared. I'm gonna do it at the bottom first. Oh my goodness. It's there. And it looks just as whimsical as I had hoped. So while I'm gonna be doing all this, I'm just gonna set up a UV light. I think we got it from Amazon. Can't be sure. And so it's splattered. I don't even know if I can show you guys really. Oh, yeah, you can see. So it gave me a line and then that like trickly down splatter that I'm super into. You guys know I like dots and splatter and stuff. So, so I'm going to try to just keep this. Never mind. Got an idea. Well, it'd be a better idea if this was smaller. Never mind. Proceed. I'm going to try to just move this periodically to get. Um, this resin starting to cure. But I'm gonna go ahead and just hit it a little bit because I don't want it to drip. I want it to be where it is and then that's where it lives. You know what I mean? Jelly beans. Aw, oh, jelly beans, cause um, Easter. What's up, JJ? Typically, UV resin needs about five minutes under UV light to cure completely. So it's not gonna take me long to just hit this. Hit it and quit it. Just hit it and quit it with the this. And I think it's pretty good for just for right now. So I can go on to the next thing thing. I'm gonna load up my this. I don't want it to have too much UV on it because I don't want it to drip. And when you put too much of something, it's gonna drip. Okay, also it's really difficult to get a straight line doing this. So I'm gonna kind of wonky them ever so slightly on the different rows. Oh my goodness, this may be my new favorite thing. Look how fun. And then once we pop them with color, it's gonna be even more, more fun. <gasps> I'm so excited. Okay, so just like the last one, I'm gonna hit it with a bit of UV just to keep it from doing anything I don't want it to do. I love the like movement in this. It's like design sporadicness. That probably doesn't even make sense, but 
I get it. Okay. So I'm just going to hit it ever so slightly with my this because I don't want it to move. But every time I put a line in, I'm going to hit the UV with the light and that's going to further cure all the other lines on the way down. Now I mean, cool. Next. I'm so excited about this. Okay. Load it up. Design splat is a thing now, apparently. Okay, I'm gonna try to do it this way so you guys can kind of see. So I'm trying to, okay. I'm trying to get close to this one, so I'm gonna angle it this way. I just have to make sure that this trajectory doesn't overlap this line. And I'm not sure how to do that other than just being really good at eyeballing it. Which I don't know if I am good at eyeballing it. But I will say that that's good enough for me. It's kind of thin up here because I was closer to this side because I wanted to make sure that the trajectory was not off. This is making me want a chocolate covered strawberry and I'm not ashamed. Oh, thanks, Clara. It is kind of cool. You're laughing because I'm so excited. I'm fully excited about this. You know when you have an idea and you're not really sure if it's going to work, but then it does work and you're like, what? And you're just so excited to share with people. That's where I'm at. But I'm doing my what with you guys. What? Okay, I'm going to do one more splatter ring. Splatter ring for the win. Oh my goodness, I don't even know if that's doing anything, but we're going to keep doing it. Okay. I'm sure if I wanted to, I could go back over that last one to make those thinner areas thicker. However, comma... I don't, I don't want to mess it up. You got to know when to quit sometimes. Nah, nah, I mean, okay. So we're going to go, we're going to go, eh, okay. Stop moving. Okay. Oh, it sped up on me. Nice. So excited. Okay. So what do you guys think of our Easter egg not vase so far? What's up, Swamper? How you been? Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. Clara just showed me up with the... UV raindrop dots on something because she's doing a dragon. No one's surprised she's doing a dragon. However, well, I'm not even surprised that it looks amazing because it just looks amazing for the record. I thought you were going to put glitter in it and spin it around to let the resin pick it up. So I'm kind of doing that except for in reverse because it's easier to control the UV resin than it is glitter because I don't know if you know this, glitter has more of a mind of its own. It's, it's about like resin. Glitter and resin both have a mind of their own. I am putting the UV lamp on both sides because honestly, for me right now, the inside is the most important. I need it to get tacky cured on the side that I'm going to put stuff. Also, also, if you guys haven't subscribe to Vamp's channel. It's a birthday and that would be a great gift for her. She's a resin artist. She does amazing things with skulls. She does 
countertops, wall art. She does all the things, and it's her birthday, and you should subscribe. She's trying to hit a goal with her subbies. And she does have a great channel. All right. I went ahead and blacked out one of my fine tip thing things with black duct tape and um, I just colored the top in with a Sharpie. Took a couple coats. And I'm gonna put some of my UV resin in there. Uh, I don't have a lot left, so it's not gonna be that much. Oh, 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 I got it on the outside. Oh my goodness, this is messier than I thought. Oh my goodness, okay, wait for it. I'm so glad that wasn't all the way on camera because it was not, it was not a good look. Me getting resin everywhere, amateur. Anyways, you can see the aftermath, it's everywhere. Okay, I don't know how much is in there, but we're going to roll with whatever it is. I'm going to clean up all of this. Mind your nozzles when you're filling up your this. Just telling you in advance. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the outside of this jar with an alcohol rag. Nope, not jar. It is a squeeze bottle. I'm going to clean up the outside because... I don't want to accidentally transfer anything sticky to anywhere that I don't need it. That's what she said. All right. Boop. All right, her deer skulls are amazing. Well, that's awesome. Valerie, thank you. I'm gonna switch gloves actually, cause I don't wanna risk transferring anything. All right. So now's the time where you or I, me, now's where I'm going to do, hi Jerry. Now I'm going to add some little extra designs with the this. I'm not even 100% sure of what I'm going to do or if it's going to come out. Oh my goodness, way finer of a point than I thought it would be. You can add whatever designs you want. You can go as ham on the designs as you want. I'm not gonna be too crazy on this one. With this technique, I can totally see myself getting lost and just essentially doodling with this resin. But one, I don't have that kind of time because we're live. And two, I don't have that kind of time because we're live. But if I was just doing it on my own time, be a lot going on. I can't wait till we add the... I think I'm going to do some chameleons in this. Because why not? I'm already going to be dusting micas in there anyways. Got to be careful not to blob out too much resin because if you have too high of a dollop, 
it's going to run when you start to turn the piece. Okay. I'm squeezing this so hard that my thumb is getting tired. Maybe don't get the smallest needle tip this. I mean, it's working. Getting a cramp in my hand. Okay. We got some dots. Doesn't look like the best dots, but they're gonna be amazing in a minute. So what am I gonna do with the rest of that bit? Let's just UV this first. I think it's really good to hit it with UV in between not only because you don't want it to run, but if your hand just so happens to hit it, you won't really smudge it and mess up what you've done. Oh, you think it's from Target? Cool. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to hang out with me today, by the way means the mostest. The mostest. Hmm. What am I going to do now? I almost want to like do Harlequin type lines, but I don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, here we go. If this is for a client, I would be measuring out the lines, making sure everything was even. Like cramping my hands. I'm gonna do this. Oh, is that messing with y'all? I'll try to keep my hand over it. This definitely works for thinner lines. Man. My right here hurts. Um, yeah, it's the same little bottle that I, I put my alcohol inks in. In fact, this is one of my alcohol ink bottles. I just cleared the ink out of it. If I had the time, I would fully mandala this whole thing. Sadly, though, I don't have that kind of time. Well, I haven't really smushed the whole inside because it's... Um, 
it's mostly dry because we hit it with so much UV light. All right, we're halfway done with this, so we're two thirds of the way done with the whole piece. But I'm getting used to the mechanics of doing this, so the second half of these lines won't be taking quite as long. I'm assuming Bowie has something she wants. Bowie is sitting on the corner doing nothing. Hi. Well, made that one a little bit. You can't see it because look there. Oh, you guys can turn it this way. That does not look that cute. I cut that end in a little too hastily, so I'm gonna just. Thicken that up and hope no one notices. But y'all, you guys know all of my secrets. I'm squeezing this little bottle so hard my hand is shaking. My lines have a little bit of wonky to them, but I feel like it's fine. Mainly because UV resin's gonna blob out a little bit anyways, so it'll fill in. Um, if I would have had the time or the foresight, I would have drawn on the outside of my egg with um, like chalk pens. What are you doing? I didn't even know you were here. That way I could have just copied the design as I go. Right. Are there any questions I can answer? For anyone on this process or any of the the art that we do. Whew, last line on this layer. I'm starting from both corners because I want to make sure that I line them up proper and I can't really see what I'm doing. Whew. I don't even think you guys can really see what's happening because of all the glare. But it's looking pretty cool. Just gonna hit it real quick. We missed you too, Valerie. Clara, that's exactly what I'm gonna do.
can you use UV resin on a tabletop? So, sure, you can, but it usually comes in smaller quantities. It cures really fast, especially if it's daylight, so it's not gonna give you much cure, like work time. But if you're just doing designs like this, I suppose you could. Have you tried bubble on any ocean pieces or marine pieces? I've shown you guys every um, every piece that I've done. What's up, Carrie? So I'm going to make a mess. All right, I'm going to do dots down here and let them just run down. They may not run all the way down. They may not run perfectly together. What's the thought that counts? I think. I'm trying to keep this egg as vertical as I can so that everything runs perfectly north-south uh, in theory. I'm sure I'm not holding this exactly north-south. And it's probably going to get a little wonky down there, but whatever. Couple of these need just an extra little boop. <laughs> Don't know what that's going to do down in the bottom of it, but whatever it does, we'll love it just the same. All right, now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do in this area. My puppies. So I'm gonna do just dots on this just to fill it in. Takes way less time. Still looks good. I think I'm going to vary the size of my dots. I know you guys can't really see what's happening, but give me just one second and I'll give you a close up. Just creating circles and filling them in.
Bowie's trying to get little, nope, little lady trying to get Bowie to play. Can you guys hear him? <sighs> the clear on clear looks good already. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm going to definitely be coloring it in with Micah, but. I do like the clear on clear as well, so that may be something I try in the future. Some of my bigger dots are traveling a bit because I had to use more resin on the bigger ones, but that's fine. I think I may leave this, this area, I may leave it just plain. I'm trying to think if I want to do that. It'll be fine. Let's hit it with some um, this and we'll start adding our powders. Are you guys really throwing out egg puns? Silly gooses. All right, so what I'm trying to do at this point is to dry it to the point of tacky. And not completely dry. because I want it to be sticky for the Nope. That is all fluid in the bottom. Okay. Vamp. I'm watching you. They're throwing all the egg yolks at me. I mean, egg jokes at me. Egg yolks. But don't shh. Sounds good, Clara. So, our first swirly lines are dry enough. Our crisscrossies are dry enough. Our drippies are like one minute from dry enough. Okay, so you guys have to help me figure it out. Just ignore us. I'm going to stab you. Not really. I know. I'll get put on the, I'll get canceled. Okay, so you guys got to help me out. Should I go ahead and chameleon these and then worry about the micas? Because when I add the micas, um, canvas! Bowie's about to get her. Um, because when I add just the micas, the color art micas, I have to add the this, and I don't think it will mess with the chameleons, but I'm not sure. So should I just 
put this everywhere and just dust all the all the powders in at the same time or should I pre color it with the chameleons okay or should I pre color it with the chameleons and Come here, Bubba. He was playing. I know he was playing, he's but done, he's done. I know, and that's fine. But I'm trying to do a live right now, and I can't have her barking like that. So, yes, I should witch. Yes, yes, pre color, pre chameleon, pre color. So everybody says pre color. The only thing I'm worried about is when I put this this in, is it going to mess up the chameleons? Who knows? We'll worry about it later. So I'm because it's going to be Eastery, I'm going to use Grumpy and Bad Apple. I don't really want any too dark of colors in there. Exactly. I don't even know. Sevelyn, I would test on a coaster, but it's it's not vertical. It's I could, but it's not, I guess. Anyway, I got time for that. I mean, I should, but it's whatever. I was going to just toss it in with that, but I'm going to dust it. Turning my fan so I don't get chameleon everywhere. All right. I love it already. Ultimately, I could just dump a chameleon jar in here. And I'm trying to kind of pick where my colors are going just a little bit. Even though ultimately, I know by the end of this, I'm just going to be like, ah. yellow, wherever the colors are, the colors are. Hello. That's where they live now. Unfortunately, you guys yet can't really see the awesome that's happening. But give me two more seconds and I'll bring this up to you guys so you can see what goes on. Do you have anything that's black background? The answer is no. Maybe it'll... Be fine with red. Oh, there you go. So the grumpy is blue and purple. Now we're going to do some bad apple, which is greens, purples, and golds, I think. In theory, these chameleons are only going to stick to the UV resin and not the background, the, the, um, the vase itself, but it is catching on all the little specks of UV resin that was splattered on with the frother thing. And so that's creating a really neat fill-in in between these big design elements. I toyed with the idea of just rolling around black resin in, in this and that having that be the background, but I was going to let you guys decide. Should I just use black on the inside after these chameleons or should I do the other micas as well?
Judy says she thinks it'll mess it up. I should use the a fixative to set it. And that is not a bad idea. So I'll probably I'll probably set it. Also, hi Judy. I hope Gary's feeling okay. Also, baby cricket. Also, also you. All right, now we have the greens, the purples, and the blues. Whew. Those little dudes are done now. I guess I'm just gonna kind of alternate which one's green and which one's purple. Where am I? Where did I start? Okay. I'm not really sure what I'm after either, but I want my chameleons to stay where they are and not travel when I put the pouring medium in. So that is why I'm leaning towards Um, using an archival spray to set the chameleons. It couldn't hurt, right? I don't think so anyways. Just getting this last row. If someone had time or patience, they could really refine this look and make it something extra amazing. I'm hoping this is extra amazing, but I know that if, if I just slowed down what I was doing, it would be extra amazing. But anybody got time for that? All right, now I'm going to get, I'm just going to try to dust some of this out. Although I don't know if it's going to do anything. Any fallout is just probably going to live there, but that's okay if we're Um, fully filling it anyways. So I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this matte clear. Also Dixie, yes. Okay. Okay, wait. Okay, go. So I'm going to just light spray this. I don't want to fully coat it. Oh my god, this is going to give everything like a frosty look because this is matte. And I always tell people to use gloss um, pouring medium. So I'm essentially frosting this glass. We'll find out if it's going to work together. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of heat, not high heat by any means. I'm going to turn the heat all the way down with the heat gun and I'm going to do low airflow just to dry this out. No. Kathy, we didn't have any tornado damage. We actually live in a high rise. 
And so the tornado damage would be essentially limited to the car. But I had the car down in Seguin. When we were birthing a baby horse. Now I bet this would look just really cool if I just spray painted the inside of this black. Because I just frosted it. You can tell if matte spray paint is dry because it's no longer shiny. And it doesn't take as long to dry as... Um, what's the other thing? Gloss. Oh, Kathy, I was fully worried that day was hailing. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for stopping in. All right, you guys, this is where we're at right now. We have our chameleons down with our UV resin. And we just frosted it with our matte UV spray. Hey, look at my this. It looks like this. Whoa. Mm. And then what are you going to do? I'm gonna, well, I am gonna spray paint it, but only after I everything else it. So now I'm gonna run some of this in there. And my chameleons, I don't think are gonna come off. But again, we'll find out together. So here we go. I'm using Vallejo pouring medium. This is a gloss pouring medium. Like I said before, you could use um, something, sorry. You could use uh, UV, nope, polycrylic. You could use, I've heard of people using Mod Podge, but just make sure you use the gloss so right now I'm just coating the inside and apparently some of the outside mm-hmm so you don't want to put too much in here because you're going to have to wait for all of it that you put in there to drain out. But before you worry about any of that, you just need to worry about fully covering the inside. At least as much as you're going to want coated, which for me is going to be all of it. With your pouring mediums, um, they're going to have a slight cloudy hue to it, so it'll be easier to see what you've coated and what you haven't. Also, where you haven't coated, it takes a little longer to coat because just like water, just like resin, it's going to split and try to go around any dry spots. So that'll really get your attention. I'm sorry this part is so boring, but I thought it was important to show you guys the full process. But I'm almost done. All right, I think I have it all coated. So meow, what I'm gonna do is something. What is this?
Now I'm just gonna let it drain out into these buckets. And if you want to, you can reuse that pouring medium, just pour it back into your cup. I am not going to reuse it and clean this off later because um, it's gonna have some chameleon pigments in it now. So I'm not gonna reuse that. So while this is draining, I'm gonna pull some colors. We have a purple, which is Chancelladoni. I think I said that right. You guys can't even see much with that. Okay, we got Chancelladoni. We got Isadora. These are all color art colors. We've got Sweet Pea. I've got Mermaid Scales. Love that for me. And I'm toying with adding like more vibrant colors like this Snapdragon. Is that too dark? And then also Oasis. Bye, JJ. What do we think about these colors? Is it too much? Do you think this color, these two are too dark? Me bestow some light upon you. Didn't make any difference. Well, thank you, Evelyn. Jerry, you say these two are too dark? Look better like this? Snapdragon is a really nice color. It has some awesome sparkle to it. I mean, I guess it lightens up. All right. I, I don't think any of the colors I've pulled are going to... Um, do anything with the, it's not spirit gum, it's gum Arabic. So I'm just not gonna use that. The more, the colors that look more like um, resin art. Uh, are the ones that do awesome things with that I have a little bit of so it's all gathering on this room right here and when I turn it back up you can see pockets of it starting to collect and that's going to run down the piece if I'm not careful I'm actually just going to dab some of that off with my finger. Now, before everything fully dries on you, you want to start adding your micas. Just tappy, tap, tap, tap. Okay. I don't know if that did anything, but... There you go. So all of this 
leftover that I'll probably put back into the jar because it didn't look like it had any mica in it. Okay, you guys. Canvas! Leave him alone. Come here. We're staying on this side now. You're here now. Sorry. Apologies to everyone watching. We have a brand new puppy and she doesn't have boundaries with Bowie. Yeah, that's also true. She is boundaryless. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now let's start doing the thing. I'm going to begin with the interferences because they're going to be a lighter powder. They're finer. They're more like satiny if you mix them in resin, for example. How the... She went around, didn't she? She knows. So I'm just going to dust stuff in here. And then I'm going to beat the devil out of it, so to speak, to get it to kind of transfer around. So I'm going to open the blue, the red, gold. I don't know where my green is. It's fine because we got green right there. Huskies are escape artists. I'm learning that. Yeah, that's fun. Using my this and just boop. Oh, you already have one. I'll put that boop. down. Don't even trip. Don't even trip, Bowie. I hope I'm not putting too much of this in there. Nope, this is yours. You guys know this I tend to be a mica glutton or pigment glutton. I'm also thinking about adding darker colors because maybe not. Okay. So I am doing this to knock off any high points and get those to kind of go across the way so it kind of spreads out a bit. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but trust me. It's going to be amazing. But if you don't spread out your interferences, then they're going to collect and be, they're going to leave kind of light white spots on your finished piece. Hey. Are all dogs the same where they see that another dog has something and then all of a sudden... They have to have it immediately. <laughs> you snap on the bottom where wood goes, like, on the rim? Hey, Bowie, just get up on your couch. Right. Now it's time for the colored emicas. I'm just going all over with it because it's just going to be easier that way. I picked lighter colors, Eastery colors, if you will, because Easter is a thing coming up, I hear. Let's go in with some pink. I also hear Huskies are real chattery when they play, and that is definitely a thing with her. She barks even if she has something in her mouth, and she somehow keeps it in her mouth as she's barking. So that's exciting. After I put a black background in here, these colors are going to be very vibrant. At least that is what's happening in my head. Ultimately, I just don't want to disappoint Tudor because this is his egg that I am uh, 
just taking over essentially. At least she sleeps mostly through the night now though. All right, let's just see what we got now. Carrie, I think Tudor got it from either a dollar store or Target. There's one spot of a darker color in there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's going to look so nice. I may put some dark colors in after I get most of it pastelled out. Oh, it's for sale. All proceeds go towards a ski trip. Tudor's here. Tudor, you're at work. Don't, don't even stress. Don't apologize. Also, where did this egg come from? Did you, oh, Target. Well, there you go. Don't have to wonder anymore. Okay. So let's add some of these darker colors because I can. Just sprinkled about for a boot. Some people may not be happy with this decision, but I already had one drop of a darker color anyway, so let's just make it a choice. Yeah? Yeah. All of this will make sense as soon as I have a darker background. Yeah, everyone believed you. What are you talking about? The inside's not the most gorgeous thing I've ever done, but the outside is going to be pretty great. All right, let's put some of the Snapdragon oh, apparently on the outside. <laughs> Just don't pay attention to the inside of my this because it's a mess right now on the inside. Also, yeah, we are trying to raise money for our trip. <laughs> it is. I feel like a Girl Scout. I was say, like, we're like <laughs> Anybody have any cookies I can sell? Um, I listed all of Jeff's pieces from our show on the website in case anyone is interested in some ultra beautiful fine art by my beautiful husband. Some of this purple is going to do the thing. So I'm going to retroactively put some gums. Nope. What is this? Gum Arabic in here. What gum Arabic does is just give some of your powders a different looking texture. Just gives a little extra depth. Makes it more depthy. Depthy? I said it with a question mark, so I can't be held responsible for depthy. Are you blowing where there are open micas? I am not. Well, I am, but I blew, you know, not in there. All right, I'm going to drop some more of this purple just on where I have those spirit, nope. Why do I keep calling it spirit gum instead of gum Arabic?
exactly the same except for nothing alike. Mm. On one hand, I'm like, I hope the purple doesn't take over. And on the other hand, I'm like, let it take over. Um, I do have interference gold in here. All right. I know for sure Snapdragon's a wrap. I'm going to put some of this bright yellow in here. The Isadora. Adorable. It's adorable. Oh, apparently I'm putting all of it right there. So I'm just going to. You can see that Isadora coming out in some of the areas. But since I just put a whole scoop in there, we're gonna just set that aside. We are almost done with this part. Sorry about that. Um, will someone message Rhonda and let her know that I am live and I will call her? All right. All right, now I'm just going to fill in this area up here. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next part. And we're almost done. Just a little bit of some, some. I feel like the pink kind of got lost. I'm just letting it live up here. You can see it kind of come out of the top everywhere, which is why we are smacking the devil out of it. But ideally it would stay in there. All right. Now I'm going to add some old gold or 007, but since I'm on 007, I'm going to use some old gold to, I don't know what lids go where, to bring out some of the colors, fill in some of the open areas so that when I put the black in there, it doesn't, um, it doesn't just show a whole bunch of black on the outside of the Easter egg. Peach, peach. Also, I'm closing these because if I don't, I will mess them up a thousand percent. Nope. See, we're going to mess with Rhonda. Missing a lid. No, I'm not. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Oh, no, she's here. So we're almost done with our Easter egg thingy. I think the yellow kind of starting to mix with the purple a little bit. It's not going to be my favorite color, but it'll be fine. So meow. I'm going to throw in some old gold. People are asking me a lot lately when I'm going to get more 007 in. I have it on order. It's just not here yet. If you're in a bind and I need something similar, old gold is very similar. And what the gold does, since it's a metal flake, it sticks to literally everything. And it'll fill in every little open area that you have.
I'm going to dump the rest of this out over my trash can. Now we just have a golden egg on the inside, but it's just showing through in areas. Oh, there you are. See that gold right there? It's just patching in. This piece, as it sets, is going to change a lot because the pouring medium that we put in here is going to soak into the micas that we added, and so they're going to blend out. But I need to, so I didn't get all the extra pouring medium out and you can, hold on, I'll get it to move again. Look at the very bottom in here. See it's moving right there. That's extra pouring medium that I didn't get out. So it's just going to dry right there, which is fine. It's whatever. All right. I'm going to take some black spray paint and fill it. I don't know what this is going to do. I've never done this before. But it's about to happen. What if you put a little pile of mic on a tiny spoon and blow it out with a straw? Uh, you could. You could. You could do that. All right, be right back. Mm hmm. So the black spray paint, in theory, is just going to make everything more vibrant since we used chameleons, in theory. Okay. Let me turn this flash off. Oh, never mind. Just turned it on. So you can see the designs that we put on with the UV resin. I think that extra splattery splatter that we did that I love so much would look cleaner if we just put one solid color in the background instead of multicolor. I don't know if you guys can see that it's changing color. These interference, nope, these chameleons down here, but they are changing. They're all changing. So the inside is black and gold now because that's what mostly was in there. But I'm not upset with it. I'm not upset at all about my very colorful Easter egg. Easter-ish egg. Someone's Easter egg. I guess it's very my style Easter egg. Right now it's upside down. I'll flip it back over in a bit. But you can see here how it's gold on this line and red and then it goes to green and blue. That's because chameleon and so it'll change depending on which way you look at it. If you look at these lines right here. So when it's head on, it's like red and yellow. And then when it gets over here, it turns to blue and green. Same goes for these lines, these dots, all of them. I'm thinking about doing designs on the outside to make it a real Fabergette egg. Love the splatters. I'm going to revisit this splatter using this thing. Th this thing. All right, this thing lives here now because UV resin and the sun's half out. So you can get all of the color art colors that I use from, I mean, the primary elements that I use from colorart.com. You can get the interferences from my website. I have them from Color Passion in stock right now, and you can get the chameleons from my shop as well. We used Grumpy, and so this 
green, gold, red color is grumpy and the blue, purple one, nope, blue, purple is grumpy. This one is bad apple, the yellow, red, blue, purple one. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. We're educated or otherwise entertained today. A battery candle, little inside, that would be really cute because it goes on this stand. But like upside down, so it looks like an egg instead of a Christmas light, which is fine. You can use it for any season. And so, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. You guys are amazing. Hope you try this UV deal. If you do, post it in our uh, Facebook group, ATD's Poor People. So I can see what y'all are working on. And don't forget to subscribe to Vamp's channel for her birthday. It'd be a great gift to me for her. <laughs> because she's great. She should have more subs. Anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing day. If it's raining where you are, Stay dry. And if it's cold, we're going to be there with you soon because looking forward to being in cold soon. Jeff's over there making me a hoodie. B, can I see it? Whatever. Can I see it? Can I see it? It's so fun and it's like the more it settles and melts into the other colors, the more I love it. Also, my eyes are on my shirt, so it's whatever. And yes, they're her eyes. These are actually my <laughs> eyes. You can tell by my beauty mark. That's yours. And also my this. It's gonna be amazing. Anyways, you guys are brilliant. Please like, subscribe, share. If you haven't um, subscribed, please do so and we'll see you in the next video. Be kind to one another. You never know what someone's going through. And always remember, Erica does the test. So you don't have to. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. bye. I said bye.